is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. Now, many of you, if not most of you, know Gordon Robertson, host of the 700 Club, but there's something you don't know. And I found this out a number of years ago, but I really found it out a few days ago when I interviewed Gordon Robertson for our radio program. I'm not exaggerating. There was a river of healing, and I'm reminded in Ezekiel. Ezekiel says, wherever that river goes, there is lachaim, there is life. So I'm telling you, sickness, demons, you're on notice. The river is here. So Gordon Robertson, he's raised in a very prominent family. Uh, everyone knows his dad, Pat Robertson, uh, but you probably don't know of his grandfather. He was a U.S. senator, a U.S. congressman, uh, very well known. And uh, Gordon sees the contrast early. You can't hide things from kids. He sees his parents struggling, eating soybeans, uh, praying for the pay the bills at the end of the month. He goes to his grandfather's house and he sees well, the style he would like. So at five years old, they started getting prophetic words. Uh, they said you would be with the 700 Club. You would be a host of the 700 yes, Club. Did. What's going on in the mind of a five-year-old when you hear this? I didn't want to do that. <laughs> that was what was going on in my mind. I, I saw the price my parents paid, and I, I didn't want to pay that. Uh, and I actually thought, as, as young as that, that this... It, ministry costs too much. You, you could have so much more if you weren't in ministry. Uh, so he determines, I'm going to be an attorney. <laughs> I'm going to be like my grandfather. I like the way he's living. So he goes to Yale, graduates, top one of, the, one of the most prestigious firms in Virginia. He's part of, he's very successful. He's very happy. He has a nice family. But he gets a phone call from a friend by the name of John Jimenez. Uh, he was the pastor of Rock Church, and John's now in heaven. But uh, uh, he knew that John heard from God. And John said, God told me you're supposed to come with me to India. I'm leaving in a couple of days. What did you say? Uh, I, did, I didn't have the guts to say no. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're crazy. My lawyer brain kicked in. I knew the United States and India you had to have a visa in order to travel there. Of course. So I asked John, when are you leaving? He said, Monday morning. It was Thursday afternoon. I said, I got gotcha. <laughs> I got, I got this. I said, John, if you can get the visa, I'll go. Good lawyer thinking. <laughs> but what, Bad lawyer but, thinking. But, but what Gordon <laughs> didn't know is John played chess with him with a guy that is a better advisor than attorney, the Holy Spirit, and he had already set up the process to get his visa. <laughs> <laughs> so he gets the visa, he's on the plane. I mean, you must have been saying, I am nuts to be going to yeah, India. Yeah, why am I here? What am I doing? <laughs> Where, why am I going to India? This makes no sense. And to clear my schedule was, that was a task in and of itself. Okay, it gets worse. He gets there and John says, you're preaching tonight to 15,000 Hindus. Right. <laughs> 15, how many times had you preached before? None. None? None. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I'd gotten up in a church when I was 12 years old and, and talked, but I'd, I'd never preached in my life. 15,000 so 15, Hindus. How'd 15, you like to be thrown into that? In uh, Rajamundri, India. And... Um, the, the thing about that was it got me praying again. 
<laughs> well, would so, you say you were a little backslidden? I was way backslidden. Okay. Uh, you know, the, I wasn't apostate, but I was way backslidden. I was not living for the Lord in any way, shape, or form. And to say, okay, now you're going to preach. Okay, um, I, I need God. You know, I, I need God to answer some prayers. And so I got up and I'm, I preached in front of 15,000 Hindus. Had no idea how to do an altar call. Um, and preach things that I learned at my daddy's knee. Um, and to my absolute amazement, without an altar call, people came forward to receive salvation. Tell me about that one man briefly, the Brahmin. There was a, there was a Brahmin couple who came to me and said, I'll never forget it. Your words pierced our hearts like arrows. We cannot help but believe in this Jesus you preach. We cannot help. At the time, I didn't know Brahmins never get converted. I, I, I didn't know what it meant socially for them, that they, they literally were saying, we're leaving everything. We're leaving our position. We're leaving our money. We're leaving our family in order to embrace a new faith, a, a new God. Me. And Jesus, please forgive but me. I, I, did, I did know this, I that conversions were happening. It wasn't me. It was God at work. You're mystified to see these results. You can't sleep. Three in the morning, and you don't realize that in the Hindu religion there are certain feast days, mm -hmm. and they're up all night because they believe during the, these midnight uh, morning hours uh, demons can't touch them. But you go out, and, and you get right with God. What happened? I, I got right with God. I, uh, I rededicated my life. To him. I'd, I'd been baptized when I was young and uh, filled with the Holy Spirit when I was 12 and, and gone my own way starting at age 14. Here I am 35 years old and I say, God, forgive me. Uh, I've, I've lived for me. I haven't lived for you. And um, just felt that peace that passes all understanding. Just, it was, it was there. It was, it was, it, God answers prayer. He was particularly answers the prayer of a contrite man. And um, I started walking the city. And I, with every step, I said, I claim this land and its people for Jesus. And I'm, I'm walking and I hear this big noise down at the river. And it's a Hindu temple. Um, and there it's the night of Shiva, the God of destruction. And they're worshiping this God. And I go into the temple, I first check, you know, Lord, is this of you? Am I going to be okay in this place? And he, he says, yes. And I go in, and the first thing I see is a Hindu woman bowing down and offering sacrifice to a stone cow, where she placed incense sticks so the smoke from the incense would go into the nostrils of this stone cow. And she wasn't going through some ritual. She earnestly prayed. She got on her hands and knees in the dust in front of this idol to pray for an answer. And I had three amazing reactions. The first one was anger. How dare you, made in the image of God, how dare you bow down to this stone? What, what are you thinking? And then the second one was, you pray to the stone cow, I'll pray to the living God. We'll see who answers, almost like an Elijah with right. the prophets of Baal. And then I heard a voice behind me say, no one has ever told her. And it broke me. You know, here she had, she had lived her whole life. And no one told her ever that there was another way that there was a God you don't worship with images made of wood and stone. You worship him with your life. You worship him, the invisible, all-powerful God. No one had ever told her. When your heart broke, and that's what it's telling me, that's what you're saying right now, God poured his love upon you. You call it a baptism of love. What was that like? Um, he, he appeared to me, and, you know, it, you, know, you read about visions in the Bible and you go, how, how did that happen? But he, it, was, it was like the, the eyes, my eyes were opened and I could see him. And, and I finally understood, in him we live and move and have our being. He's always around us. It's just he, it's, it's hidden from our normal vision. Uh, I was wide awake and I saw the Lord. 
Um, and then I was able to see how much he loved these people in the middle of their idolatry. He loved them and how much he loved me in the middle of my rebellion. He, he loved me, he, he hadn't abandoned me, he hadn't turned his back on me. Uh, it was like oceans and oceans of love. How much he wanted, not just to be reconciled with me, but to be reconciled to these people in the middle of their idolatry, he wanted them to know him. And, and it had such an effect on Gordon uh, that he lets his wife know back in the States, uh, we're going to be missionaries. His wife thinks he's a Bissell Meshuggah. That's kind of Hebrew for a little crazy. He gets back home and he guts right into the rut of you know, business. Then he says, oh, I've invested so much in my life. I'm so successful. I'm not going to do that. You know, it kind of got, it faded a little. And then you had a dream and you wound up in heaven. What I had a dream. Uh, again, I'm right. Jesus is right in front of me. I can see him and it's just like in the vision at the River Temple. Uh, and there was so much love and that love is there, the outpouring and, and just it's, it's truly indescribable. And I know it's the end of the age. I know, you know, we're done and it's, it's time to enjoy heaven, except I hear a noise behind me and I turn around and it's all these Asian faces. More than I can count, they were all single file and they, there was a dark gulf between me and Jesus and them. And single file, they walked up to a rocky point and pointed up at me and said, if you had come, I would have believed. If you have come, I would Now, Gordon had no choice. He had to go into ministry. And you started some amazing things. You started 700 Club Asia, a school in the Philippines. When you were doing the 700 Club Asia, the ratings tripled and someone by the name of Pat Roberts in the States, what is going on with my son? <laughs> and then a prophet comes to you. And what does he say? He, um, it was Bill Hammond, and he says to me, he didn't know me, he picked me out of a crowd in a, a Filipino Coliseum. Um, and I was standing at the back, I was actually trying to hide. And he said, you, the sandy haired guy in the back, come forward. And I'm starting to look around, where's the sandy haired guy? And I'm with a group of Filipinos, I'm the sandy haired guy. And he calls me forward and he said, God wants your face and voice to go around the world. And the rest is history. Well, Gordon was raised in a family that understood the Jew in Israel. And from a little child, he understood God's purpose for the Jew in Israel. But he got what I call a Jewish heart when he was at the Western Wall. Briefly, what happened? I was just 11 years old. It was 1969 and uh, Jerusalem was no longer trodden under the foot of the Gentiles. And the joy at the Western Wall with them dancing with Torah scrolls, it, it touched me because the glory of the Lord was there. The, the Lord and his people had returned to Jerusalem. So it was, I guess, a, my, my goy version of a bar mitzvah uh, <laughs> to be at the Wailing Wall to see that. And I've made sure my three children have had the same experience. When they were 12 years old, I took all three of them individually. Um, and, and my son, I'll, I'll never forget, we had just finished coming back from the Wailing Wall and we're holding hands. It was, it was such a moment for me. He turns to me and says, Dad, I feel like I'm home. But tell me what happened to your heart at that moment. What did God do in your heart? Well, you're home. You know, this is, this is Zion. You're at the place where it all happened. You're, you're at the place where Abraham offered Isaac. You're at the place where Jesus offered himself. You're at the, the center of it all. And the Bible says he'll, he'll draw his people to Zion. And you know, Gordon has such a heartfelt, deep burden for Israel and the Jewish people to know their Messiah. He just produced the most amazing, powerful one and a half hour film on Israel, The Nation of Hope. 
It covers the history of the regathering of the Jewish people from the four corners of the earth with dramatic reenactments and historic footage. It shares how Israel is the fulfillment of prophecy and will be the place where every remaining prophecy shall be fulfilled. Let's take a look at a clip from this powerful film. And I have to tell you, if you don't have it right on the Jew in Israel, you will go into further heresy. I want you to have it right. By the rivers of Babylon, we sat down and wept as we remembered Zion. For those who carried us away captive asked of us a song, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? But now, thus says the Lord, Fear not! For I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. I have loved you. Therefore I will give men for you and people for your life. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. so excited about that. And you know what? It all started in Israel. It's all going to end in Israel. But you were in India and you had a revelation from God on healing. Please explain that. Uh, I was preaching in, in, in India. I already started the Asian Center for Missions. I was with a group of missionaries. I was mentoring them and, and discipling them how to be missionaries, how to preach the gospel. And we were seeing outpourings of the Holy Spirit. We were seeing salvations but I had not yet moved into the gift of healing. Uh, and frankly, I didn't want to be a faith healer. I'm getting ready to speak and God speaks to me. That's still a small voice. I want to heal the sick today. And my gut reaction was, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> I, I see some of you saying the same thing. <laughs> and. You know, I, I lost the argument with God. I, I preached for the next 30 minutes to myself and preached on faith, faith not knowing what faith hearing, really was. And, hearing and having inklings, but not that direct experience. At the end of it, I, I said, God to spoke to me and he said he wanted he to heal wanted the sick to today. Sick. Is there anyone sick anyone here? Sick. It was a small crowd, 75 people. And one woman at the back raised her hand. And I'm going, yay, because she stood up. So that means she raised her hand, she could move her arms, she could stand, she could move her legs. Uh, she heard me, so she's not deaf. She's looking at me, so she's not blind. All right, God's taking me easy. And then my heart sank because she picked up a 12-year-old boy who had never walked in his life. He had gotten polio as an infant, and his legs were all twisted and curled. Polio is a horrible disease. And it just, it, my heart broke. And, and what do you do? Um, and so I did what I knew and I broke out James chapter five. Let's get the elders. <laughs> Let's anoint with oil. Let's pray. Uh, and we did all of that and nothing happened. And it was my turn to question God, get a little, all right, God, I'm doing all I know. Voice of anguish in reply. When will you rely on me? And at first I thought it was a rebuke that I've been doing it wrong. And then something deep within my spirit sprang up. How about now? 
can I rely on you now? And that seemed like, yeah. And it came to me in a flash. Jesus never prayed for the sick. He commanded sickness to leave and it obeyed him. And so I thought that was the best idea I'd ever had. <laughs> <laughs> so I took a step back from the little boy and I pointed at him and I said, get up and walk. You commanded him. I commanded him. And there was something, we talk about faith being substance. There was a substance literally in the air between me and him. And I could see he got it. And he got up and walked. It was like a horse, a foal who's just been born. That little stumbling walk at first. And so I went to the other side and said, walk over here. Walk over and here. every step he got stronger. It's like you could see his legs literally unfurled and muscle came. It was just absolutely astounding. Found out his sister had never spoken in her life, commanded, just one word, speak. First word was hallelujah. Second word was hosanna. And then she realized she was speaking and she said in Telugu, ama ama, which means mommy, mommy. And she ran to her mother. That place erupted that day. Uh, people de demanded baptism. Not, they, I didn't have to convince anyone. They demand, today, I don't want to the sun to go down without being baptized. And so we had an impromptu baptismal service with 15 to 18 people getting baptized right there at that church. And that changed me and changed my perception. Because when Jesus speaks, when God speaks, he speaks for all eternity. I want to heal the sick today is for every day. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you know what? The river is here. I believe, as Gordon prays for you right now, that there's going to... I'm, I'm hearing so many words. Backs are, and hips are healed. Uh, Gordon, talk to the people <laughs> at home. Lord, right now we just lift up those who are infirm, and we ask right now for faith to be released. Faith is a gift from you. So we look to you, the author and finisher of our faith. We look to you as the redeemer, the healer, the savior. For by your stripes, is by nothing we've done, by your stripes we are healed. And so we command sickness now in Jesus' name, leave these bodies Pain leave now in the name of Jesus and return no more. Cancer dry up, reproduce no more and depart now in the name of Jesus. So there's a woman watching your, um, your name is Elena. You've had blinding headaches. It's like a band of pain around your forehead stretching back to the backside on the right of your head. God is healing that. He's broken that band of pain over you right now in Jesus' name. Sid, what, God, what has God given you? Well, he, he, even before the show started, he was telling me pain of any kind. But I'll tell you something I have found. I'm going to take what God told Gordon, and I'm going to say, I command you in Yeshua, in Jesus' name, to if you have a pain in your neck, you just bend your head. If you have a pain in your back, you bow down and you'll stand up and bow down. Uh, you in the studio audience, come on. You're not spectators. If you have any pain in your body, I command you to stand up and test it. If you have pain in your fingers and pain in your wrist, pain in your knees, pain in your head, pain in your, uh, your neck, wherever, you start moving around and the others keep your pain if you just don't want to do that. But, but let me tell you, there's a river going on here and do not miss the moment of your visit and at home. Do not miss the moment of your visitation because these fingers, the pain is gone. It's gone. The wrist, it's gone. In just one moment, find out how you can get this powerful DVD movie, The Hope, for free. It shares how modern day Israel is the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. An unprecedented supernatural door has opened. Large numbers of Jewish people are suddenly accepting Jesus as their Messiah and Lord like never before. As Sid Roth conducts evangelistic meetings for Jewish people in North America. They Thought for Themselves is a supernatural book that God gave Sid Roth in a dream. 
It is written from a Jewish perspective with 10 Jewish people telling their own stories to other Jewish people. The book relates to them and penetrates them in a way nothing else can. Now God has directed Sid Roth to bring this gospel message to 2 million Jewish people in America while this supernatural door remains open. Please call the number on the screen right now and say, yes, Sid, I will join Project 77, adopting seven Jewish people right now to lead them to Messiah. Most unsaved Jewish people don't have a believing family praying for them to come to know Jesus as their Messiah. When you call, you are saying, I will pray for their salvation, and I'm providing each of them a copy of They Thought for Themselves. Your gift of just $77 will provide this powerful book to seven Jewish people, and we will send you the names of your seven Jewish families so you can hold them up in prayer. In addition, we want to send you this beautiful keychain, a replica of the high priest's breastplate, which includes 12 stones, one for each of the 12 tribes of Israel. Just as the high priest would be reminded by his breastplate to intercede for Israel, we pray that your keychain will remind you to hold up your seven Jewish names in prayer every time you use your keys. Plus, when you call, you'll also receive your very own copy of the book, They Thought for Themselves. This book will stir your faith to believe God for your own family's salvation and for a limited time only, we will also send you a free copy of Gordon Robertson's powerful movie on DVD, The Hope. It shares how modern day Israel is the fulfillment of Bible prophecy using dramatic reenactments, historical footage, and so much more. Through your gift of $77 or more, you will be helping to fulfill in time Bible prophecy concerning the salvation of Israel and the Jewish people. You may feel that God is directing you now to reach 77 Jewish households by giving $777. $777 to reach 77 Jewish households is like bringing the gospel to an entire Jewish neighborhood. In Genesis 12, 3, God promises to bless those who bless the Jewish people. What blessing do you need? Family, salvation, health, more glory, finances? The heart of God at this moment is Jewish souls. Catch God's heart and watch His favor increase in your life. Every day, Jewish people in America pass into eternity without ever hearing a clear presentation of the gospel. We must move while this supernatural door remains open. And just as the door has opened supernaturally, it will close just as suddenly. Please call right now. Call, use the web, or send your check to the address on the screen. Please specify offer number P77 or log on to SidRoth.org. Next week on It's Supernatural, my guest had a tragedy. His young son, no hope, no brain activity. He had no chance. And my guest wasn't, well, he was a believer, but kind of backslidden. But Jesus appeared to him and the presence of God came on him. And he went into the hospital and he had a great miracle. And every time he shares about this miracle, that same presence goes on others. Get ready.